to us in this assembly as our year to reign, our year to reign in Christ Jesus. The book of Romans chapter number 5 verse 17 is the scripture that I will continually use until we cross over into the end. After we have even crossed over, my calf continue to use this scripture so you, it's better you memorize it. Book of Romans chapter number 5 verse 17 for if by one man offense if by one man offense dead reign by one much more they which received abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. And, and that scripture explains it all that uh, that scripture is a summary of the entire Bible. It's a summary. That scripture summarizes the entire Bible. Because the Bible says in the book of Romans, um, book of Genesis chapter number 1, verse 26, that he created us in his own image and likeness. Somebody say image and likeness. Say the image and likeness. So God created us in his own image and likeness and God designed for us to reign. Hallelujah. God intended for us to, you know, say in that book of Genesis 1, 26, you know, subdue and rule the earth. Have dominion, subdue. Now the word subdue have a connotation that there is going to be some opposition. Somebody say opposition. Opposition. So when it says subdue, it means that we think that we're not going to be able to just give us, we have to kind of enforce it, to subdue, to put it under subjection. Hallelujah. Amen. So God gave us that commission, and that is the very reason that he created us. Uh, this morning, I want to take my text from the book of Psalms chapter 8. I might not be able to finish it, but I just want to touch Psalms chapter 8. Uh, if you open with me to Psalms chapter 8, let's, let's take it up from there. Because there is uh, uh, David, you know, questioning uh, the reason, uh, what is man? Hallelujah. Amen. And Psalms chapter 8 starts with these uh, wonderful words. Oh Lord our God, how excellent is your name in all the earth, who has set your glory above the heavens. Out of the mount of babies uh, and suckling house thou ordained strength because of your enemies, that thou might steal the enemy and the avenger. So in verse 3, it goes on to say, when I consider, somebody say, when I consider, when I consider to somebody say, when I consider, say it again, when I consider, the heavens, the work of thy fingers, the moon, and the stars, which thou hast ordained. So then, you know, begin to uh, say to God, when I consider the magnitude of things that you have done, when I consider the heavens, when I consider the moon, the stars, and all of these splendid things in creation, when I look at them all, I begin to ask the question, what is man? What is man that thou art mindful of him? If you look at man, man is just a tiny piece of creation uh, that, you know, that if, if you look at the vastness of the earth, if you look at how the earth is, and you look at man, man is just a tiny piece on the entire earth planet. Hallelujah. And so then he said, when I consider the heavens, the walls of earth, when I look at the entire work of your creation, when I look at everything, I'm going to say, what is this man that you are so interested in, that you are mindful of, that you visit him? And when David was speaking here, he was bringing to an import 
uh, a scripture from the book of Genesis which says that God used to come in the cool of the evening to be able to have to talk to Adam and Eve. Are you with me this morning? He yeah. said, so when I consider the heavens, the walls of the hands, and all of the moon and the stars, when I look at their galaxies, you see, you see, when David was speaking these words and writing these words, uh, we did not even have the technology today to begin to explore the galaxies. Are you understanding? To begin to see the splendor of God's creation. Uh, but David could imagine, say, when, when I look at all of these things in the earth, what is it in man that you are careful about, that you are so much? What is man? Hallelujah. Amen. What is man that you are mindful of him, that you visit him? And when verse 5 says, For thou hast made him a little lower than the angels. So, man in the statue of creation is lower than the angels. I'm going to try to uh, make sure you understand that. Our angels are immortal. Are you believing? Angels are immortal. They cannot die. Man is mortal. Man is bound to return to dust. Are you with me? Yes. Angels are not confined. Angels are not limited. Are you with me this morning? Yes. Angels are not limited. They go wherever they want. They don't have to take taxes. They don't have to pay flight tickets. They are not limited. Man is limited. Yes. Angels are not limited. Angels have direct access to the presence of God. Angels can just pop into the presence of God. Man does not have that grace in his creation. Hallelujah. Amen. So, 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 what is man that you are mindful of him? You have created him a little lower than the angels. Man is limited. Man is limited. Angels are not restricted. They move wherever they want to move. They go wherever they want to go. Uh, so, why are you so considerate of man? So you know when you know when David was writing these psalms, he looks at the, the first week of creation and he looks at Genesis chapter one verse twenty-eight to twenty. He says, "You have made him, you know, in your own image and likeness." Somebody said, "Image and likeness." Image and likeness. God made us. In, he said, "But here you have crowned him with what with glory and honor." Somebody said, "With glory." With glory. Say with glory. Because when I was thinking about this and meditating, God says, I'm going to make you reign in glory. So you, if God says, I'm going to make you reign in glory, you need to understand the meaning of the word glory. Because sometimes when we talk about reigning in glory, we always talk about the eschatological part of it, reigning in glory at the end of the day. Praise the Lord. Uh, but for us to be able to understand the word glory, we need to be able to look at the first mention of the word. Hallelujah. You know, for you in the Bible, there's a, a law that is called the law of first mention. And uh, the word glory is actually mentioned 203 times in the Bible. So for you to understand the meaning of glory, when God said, I'm going to make you really glory, uh, I, I have crowned you with glory and with honor, you need to go back to the first time the word glory was ever mentioned in the Bible. Hallelujah. Amen. To be able to understand what is glory. Hallelujah. Now the first time the word glory was ever mentioned in the Bible, it has to do with Genesis chapter 31 verse 1. Uh, because uh, when I talk about reading in glory, uh, what comes into your heart is that you're going to read in the last days. You're going to read with Christ when he comes back so, but that's not the intention. That's not the reason that he granted you with glory and with honor. That's not the reason that he created you in his image and likeness. God intended for you to reign in glory while you're on earth. 
He wants you to reign in glory. So Genesis chapter number 31. And he heard the words of Laban's son saying, Jacob has taken away all that was our father's and of that which was our father's has he gotten all his glory. So the first time the word glory is mentioned and that word glory is kabod in, in, in the Hebrew. That's the first time the word glory was mentioned. So he said, the Bible says, David, I mean Jacob heard the sons of Laban. Now do you remember that uh, uh, Jacob was serving Laban. Are you with me this morning? For me a little bit of woman love. He was serving Laban and he's had to serve Laban for about 14 years. So on his exit, when he had to leave, the Bible said the sons of Laban were gossiping, they were talking and said, Jacob has taken away all that was our father's and of that which was our father's had he gotten all the glory. Praise the Lord. So here, he was not talking about eschatological glory. He was talking about abundance, material things. Because Jacob has come in into Laban's house and has served for 14 years. And if you are a student of the Bible, you remember how many times Laban tried to twist the wages or the slavery of Jacob. Are you understanding me? Because he find out that Jacob was prospering. And so when Laban, uh, I don't need to explain this to you, because you need to understand the word glory. When Laban saw how Jacob was prospering, he said, oh, well, you know, they had a fixed term of uh, contract. But Laban came to change the terms of the contract. He said to uh, Jacob, uh, from now on, you will only get the sheep that is plain color. You remember the story? Yes. All the sheep that is one color, that will be your own. And you know that the tendency for the sheep to have one color is very, very difficult. Yes. That's what they've been taught. Uh, but you know what the Bible says, in that year, all the sheep God that was breeding, that it was given them to was one color. Mm. So, David said, uh, Jacob said, thank you, son, you're all mine. And when Levi look at it, when, when Levi look at it, he said, ah, okay. And you know, we have to adjust the terms of the contract. Are you with me this morning? Yeah. Because this year, when you can say all the, all the sheets that are one color, brown, if, the, if you have to take it, it has to be brown and brown from head to toe. It doesn't have to be speckled, no other color. And you know, that is not possible, quite possible. You know, if you have if you have exceptional few. Even when you see dogs that are breeding, there's always spots, you know. You might have one out of ten that is just plain color, one full color. So when he did that, you know, that year, Jacob scooped all the sheep. That out of, let's say, 100% of the sheep that breed, for that season, you know, ninety-nine point nine of them were plain color. And Jacob said, "Thank you, sir. Uh, thank you for the terms of the contract." And Laban went and had sleepless night because now <laughs> Jacob has taken everything. So he came and said, uh, "Excuse me, we have to readjust the terms of the contract." Amen. Jacob said, "That's okay, box." It's okay, it's all right, I accept it, no problem. And so Jacob said this time, okay, all the sheep that has multicolor speckled, there will be no wages for this year. Mm -hmm. Jacob said, okay, sir, I'm just saying it with gladness of that. And the Bible says that year, every sheep that breed, breed multicolor. Are you understanding me? So now Jacob took 100%. So now the Bible says in verse uh, Genesis 31 verse 1, and he heard the words of Laban. So now Laban's son, they were agitated <laughs> that this man has come and has taken our father's glory. Are you understanding me? So glory here is talking about abundance. Tell somebody abundance. abundance. Tell somebody abundance. abundance. So when the Holy Spirit says you're going to reign in glory, he's talking about your so when we talk about reigning in life and reigning in glory by Christ Jesus, the Holy Spirit says you are 
going to have abundance of everything that you ever need. I wish I had some witness in the house. Everything that you ever need, it does not matter how much the enemy is going to try to twist Amen. the terms of the contract. In 2016, whenever they thought they were taking you down, it's going to turn out for your own glory. Ah, you don't understand me. Whenever they thought they are squeezing you to the corner, when, when people think that it, it is over with you, we have succeeded to keep him tight. You know, it's going to turn out for your own glory. God is going to make you take the glory from your enemy. And you don't understand me. And so when Jacob was said, let and try to twist it and change the things of the contract. But every time he tried it, he turned out for good. That's why the Bible said, for all things, work together for good to them that love God, to them who are called according to his purpose. When you are in Christ Jesus, I want to prophesy to somebody that 2016, it does not matter where they give you. It does not matter what happens to you. It will turn out for your own glory. Are you kidding me? I say it will turn out for your own glory. You need to understand that you have everything that it takes for you to be glorious. I know you don't like enemies. How many of you don't like enemies? 
Oh, come on, I'm very, I, I don't like enemies. Uh, I'm sorry uh, because God is going to allow enemies into your life. Amen. Amen. Uh, somebody said, I don't want. Uh, because when you don't have an enemy, you become stagnated in a position. Why some of you are in the same position is because you don't have an enemy. Why are some of you are not prayer warriors? It's because you don't know how to pray. It is because there is no enemy. Uh -huh. Because when there is an enemy, uh, it brings out something in you that was done. <laughs> An enemy is the see God is gonna allow some enemies to come into your life. But you are saying, ah, I am okay here. And God said, how do I move him to glory? Except I allow an enemy. Because whenever an enemy comes, he says some extraordinary ability inside of you. Some of you don't know what you can do until an enemy comes. Uh -huh. And let me talk to you a little bit about it. Because David will remain a shepherd boy for a long time.
because 10,000 jobs out of 10,000 uh, BQ and AQ, they have taken the slack. And by the time the end of the month, you are pro how are you going to raise? How are you going to raise when the salary is already gone on baby orders?
That's me. If you're eating two times a day, how are you going to help those who are not able to eat once? It's an error. How are you going to help? It's an error. You can die. You have desire to do great things, but you don't have the capacity. The capacity is already inside you. The problem is that you are too comfortable where you are. And when we talk about reigning in life, God is going to release enemies. I know you don't like that prophecy. You don't want to clap for that one. Enemies are going to come into your life until you run out. Say, yo, I have to go to prayer meeting now. Pastor, is it today is Monday. Is there church today? You'll be asking for church on Monday. Because you are detected. You, you want something to happen. But if you are comfortable, you know, Pastor, I didn't even know it was Wednesday. <laughs> you didn't know. But when you are detected, Monday looks like Wednesday. Monday even looks like Sunday. You'll be asking, Pastor, where is the church? Is there any prayer meeting? They say, no, I, today is Friday. Is this the last Friday? No, in this next week. Ah, you know, Pastor, it's too long. Why? Because you are detected. Some, you need something to happen. The enemy causes discomfort in your soul. The enemy reveals your flaws. The enemy reveals your weakness. And you stays you out of your comfort zone. So you begin to look for new areas. You begin to explore new areas. Some of you have been stuck in one area of your life too. Even when it is no longer productive. Amen. <laughs> You keep on doing it. Me, I have a job. Job pays you same amount of money, 10 years. I have a job. You're going up in the morning. Where you going? I'm going to walk. You walk until you raise nothing to show. God is going to change that this year. I know you don't believe it, but God is going to change that. I have prayed. Amen. My prayer is that God should stay you out of your comfort Amen. zone. So that the only things that you have will be able to manifest. Some of you don't know that you're a great businessman until you lose your job. Some of you don't know that you have great ideas that can make money until you come to the place where you don't have money. Some of the best recipes you cook, you don't cook them when you have money. Yes. Some, of, some of the best food you eat is not when you have money. You know how I know? Because when you have money, you go to Nando's, you already know the recipe. When you have money, you go to the spurs. They are already prepared. But when you have 20 men and you need to survive, for two days, you develop a technology how to use a tin fish and make some soup that will last two days. How many people want to You have not been there yet. That's why you still like this. When you have 20 rand, you know that 9 rand 99 can get you a tin fish of you know, mackerel, whatever they call it. And you know the one that is has tomatoes and the one that doesn't. Before that time, you don't know that there is one in tomatoes. You never know. But when you are for 20 rand and you need a supply, you find the one that is, I need the one. You begin to read. Before you buy it without reading them, how many of you buy things without even reading them? Just tell this. You grab this one because there's money. When there's no money, you begin to look. This one has uh, tomatoes. Honey, this one does not have. Uh, <laughs> you begin to develop some. So God tell me, I'm going to stay up. Yeah. Because there is everything in you that you need to read in life. But it's very common because you have not been stayed up. Yeah. Yeah. You can bring a tin fish and feed five children and you don't know how. Yes. Amen. And you, you, everybody will say, what? 
It's so nice. How many of you know that when you're very hungry, every food is nice? Yeah. <laughs> every food is nice when you're hungry. How many of you have been hungry before? Whatever they say, you, how did you make this? What if you have money? What is this one? Yeah. When you're hungry, you don't look at the face. Yeah. You just put it inside your mouth and you need to say, it's so nice. Yeah. How did you do it? <laughs> just somebody, God is about to stay you up. <laughs> say again, God is about to stay you up. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> something with you. He said, let us make man in our own image. Hallelujah. Amen. And the Bible said, in the likeness of God created he him. Man and female. Hallelujah. Amen. The difference in man and a woman. That's what I want to close. The difference in man and a woman. Hallelujah. Amen. God does not have a physical body. So he designed man's body to walk in ways, you know, as without him that has the body. God can see, God can hear, God can smell, God can touch, God can speak. So we can do all of those things. So we are in the image and likeness of God. Hallelujah. Our posture, our intellect, our emotions, our communication skill, all demonstrate the image of God that is stamped upon us. But both men and women, though we are different, are image bearers of God. Man, number one, man is a warrior. Man is the hunter. Man is the head and the initiator. He leads. Man, men like to pursue. How many of you know that? If a man does not have that empty uh, desire, he's not a man. Men like to hunt, to pursue. Whether to hunt for food, for promotion, for life, or to hunt for a life partner. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Men are the ones that pursue women. Mm -hmm. If you're a man and you're waiting for a woman to come and pursue you, you are out of order. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> 
will be like, no, stop. God is the one who was looking for Adam. You remember? Mm -hmm. Adam, where are you? Mm -hmm. That is the nature of man. Man goes out to seek. Seek for ways to make provision. Seek for ways to bless his family. Seek for... Oh, no. Mm -hmm. Don't be a man sitting there, crossing your name. Yeah. So how much did you make today? <laughs> yeah. That's the basic nature of God. And that's when a man fulfills that mandate, he is acting as the head. Because God is the head. So where is the woman in this? Women are beautiful and mysterious. Trying to understand a woman, you will die young. Yeah. <laughs> I don't understand my wife. It was one way for you to understand. Yeah. Don't try to understand. Women are beautiful and mysterious. Amen. The things they do is beyond comprehension of the man. Amen. And when men try to understand women, they get into problem. Because yeah. you can't understand why she stands at the mirror for two hours, looking at the mirror and come back to ask you, how do I look? <laughs> you will know, never understand it. Uh, I thought you saw yourself on the mirror. So if, if you try to understand, you begin to ask, what were you doing in the mirror? That's going to cause a problem. You just say, you look so beautiful. Amen. And that's something. If you try to understand the two hours in the mirror and come into us, you how do I know? I thought it was in the mirror. Did you see yourself? Do you need some glasses? And they come and ask you, how do I know? If you try to understand the two hours I was spending and the question they're asking you now, you're going to get into trouble. Since so you're saying you're so beautiful and mysterious. <laughs> I, that means I don't understand you, but anyway, I love you. <laughs> Women are more relationship oriented. They tend, they, they love to be pursued. Women love to be pursued. When you stop pursuing your wife, the relationship gets sour. You must pursue your wife. You must be the hunter always. Never agree. Now you are in my next. I don't pursue you again. Even though he's in your next, you must keep on pursuing. Amen. Amen. When you cease to pursue your wife, you lose control of your relationship. Yes. Mm. You must pursue her all the time. Yes. How do you pursue? You know, you wake up in the morning and say, I love you. <laughs> First thing you said the last time, if you fail to say it for one week, you're going to get into trouble. Amen. You must always pursue. Yeah. Now, you don't have to tell me that I love you. I know it. If you don't tell me I love you for one week, it doesn't even matter. I know you know. But I must tell you, I love you. How many of you know you must tell your wife I love you every day? To stay on top of your game. To be a good husband. If you forget, I don't want to tell you what will happen. Do not tell your wife I love you for one week. Where have you been? You wake up in the morning and say, I miss you. I thought we were sleeping together. If you say you miss me, I thought, I thought we should just wake up together now. But you must pursue. Women love to be pursued. Hallelujah. Amen. And they are image bearers of God in that God loves to be pursued. Do you know that? So I'm showing you the dual nature of God. Amen. God loves to be pursued. Mm. He said, if you look 
for me, you will find me. Even when he's there, you still have to look for him. How many people know that God is everywhere? God is here with us. But he said, if you look for me, you will find me. I thought he said, I'm with you always. So how do I have to? God wants to be pursued. That's the nature. That was the nature that was in man. When man was created before the separation. So man, God is a hunter. He looks for, he needs to be looked for too. He said, if you seek me, you shall find me after you have sought for me with the whole of your heart. I thought that God knows that I'm looking for him. I thought that God knows that I love him. Do you understand why you should be in church? Because you've got to look for him. Amen. Because that nature that your wife has, that you have to pursue always, is part of the nature of God in her, that you have to look for God. In 2016, you have to develop these two natures to be able to reign. You have to be a hunter and you have to be haunted. Hallelujah. Amen. This nature must grow in you. You have to look for God. Hallelujah. Amen. You have to look for God. You have to pursue God. You know, you have to understand that God is a mystery always. Never come to the place that you say, I know him. Yeah. Never come to the point where you say, no, now nah, I'm okay in God. Paul said, let him that think that he stands, take him, let him fall. There is no place for resting. It is a pursuit of God. Yeah. Your reigning in life in 2016 will depend on your pursuit of God. Yeah. Seek you first. The kingdom. Seek God. So the third word is seek God. In everything that you do. Seek God. Look for God. Pursue God. And when you get
says, I want to know you. 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 I want to know you, Lord Jesus. I want to know you.
receive life abundantly in Christ Jesus. I receive life into my body. I receive life into my finances. I receive life into my relationship. I receive life into my career. I receive life into my business. I receive life into my life in the name of Jesus. And I declare let every area of my life that was dead receive life in the name of Jesus. Give those thanks to the Lord Jesus Christ.